is a story about how some middle school kids inspired us to make a gigantic rock tumbler. Welcome to the Hawaii Keiki Museum. It all started with this image from Mr. Michigan Rocks, who does a lot of rock tumbling, and so he built this cabinet to help keep the noise down. But when we started thinking about the museum, we found this version of a rock tumbler with a five gallon bucket more appealing because it can do larger rocks. Then we saw this image of tires being used as a rock tumbler and we said, oh yes, this is gonna give us not just capacity, but the ability to have rocks tumbling at different stages. So we looked around the shop and we found this motor and said, this will work. But it's a three-phase motor and it needs to be wired correctly. And when we started looking at all of the options, we realized we need a special motor driver. So we ordered this Genesis AC speed controller, which works really well. We puzzled out exactly how to connect the three-phase circuitry and we wired them up together. Then we started casting around the museum looking for what kind of parts we could spin and we found some of this rod. So we had to build a special bracket to hold the motor to the rod. We put it all in a little wooden shelf and were able to start rolling one of the rods using the motor. Unfortunately, the motor is a geared motor and it rolled really slowly. So we tried a couple of ways of making the shaft thicker so that they would roll a little bit faster, but ultimately we burned out the motor. So we scavenged this new motor from the pasta maker that we had. And the new motor spins at a really good speed once it was hooked up to the controller. All right, Darren, let's put a wheel on it. You want to see how fast the wheel turns? Uh, it'll, it'll push off. Uh, push off. Oh, we need the key. Yeah. Okay. And I need the key. Okay. After getting it all bolted down and throwing a few geodes inside, we invited the middle school kids to come take a look and see how their rock tumbler that they inspired works. We put the first motor on it and it turned too slowly because it was geared. And then I guess they blew it up. So it stopped turning all together and that was the end of that. Uh, so then we pulled this motor off of the pasta maker and it works at a good speed. And the variable speed lets it really kind of move at the right clip. You can actually definitely go too fast. So it was a trial and error bit of process, bit of construction. These are the ones that came out of the tumbler. These were tumbled for three days. Um, and what's really interesting is that they started the actual off, geodes, right? Yes, they started off. They start off looking like that and end up looking like that. When you knock all these corners off and you start to see the underlying rock structure, you can really see the veins. So if you then cut it, you can really know what you're cutting into because you can see the veins so much more clearly than you can when it's, you know, untumbled. We filled each tire with the same kind of geodes, but we put a different grit in each one. These are the rocks that they selected, and they put in an equal amount in each one of them, more or less. The, more rock, less. the, the, the volume of rocks volume. is probably one of our bigger variables that is other than the, yep, the actual the grit. grit, but that's okay. We sealed each tire up with an inner tube so that the rocks don't jump out and we don't lose too much water to evaporation. We tried no grit, which would just burnish the rocks. We tried white sand from the local airport. We tried black basalt sand from uh, the South Point, and we tried a blended sand that's uh, sort of salt and pepper and has some olivine in it. As well, the fifth tire is going to be filled with 
the standard coarse polishing grit, the 6090 silicon carbide that is often used. Next week, we'll open them up and see what these geodes look like. So it's a bit like a magnet, I this know, rock right collection, here. right? Yes, right? It's a people magnet. The first set of rocks had no grit in it at all. No grit is often the last stage for the final polish. The second set had black sand basalt. You can see little bits of it here. The next tire had started out with white sand, but it was a bit smaller than the other tires. We weren't able to seal it, so we wound up having to abort and pull these ones out. The tire that had olivine in it, the green sand, made a real gummy texture. It needed more water to be added. The silica carbide is the traditional grit that you use, and you can see it really stripped these down. We call these now naked geodes because it pulled the whole outer shell off of them. You see a little bit of like a crystal? It's, it's funny because normally you take a geode and you cut it open so that you expose the crystal from the inside. But what we've it, done is right we've there. removed, yeah, we've removed the outside, exposing the whole crystal yeah, from the outside. Like? That is pretty sweet. Which is a really <laughs> weird thing to do, <laughs> but fascinating. Looking at the world from a fresh set of eyes, <laughs> though, you know, like yes, a concretion into the bottom of the ocean or bottom of the lake. Yeah, yeah, Lake Superior produces a lot of them. They have a real lumpy, rounded look like that. Mm -hmm. They're really fun when you find them. They're good luck. Huh. Oh. <laughs> You can go walk along the beach and find them sometimes after a big Some storm. Of these naked geodes are just which state is fascinating. Uh, Wisconsin, 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 but also Minnesota. What yeah. else borders like? Canada yeah. and Michigan, the UP of Michigan. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, Michigan. It is so interesting. It is like like this one was starting. Right, but this one could do some more, and then you would have a true naked geode if Big you could just yeah. tumble it a bit more, and then you would have the whole thing. I just think that's so cool. There are other projects that we've been working on in the museum. This is the base for a teeter-totter that's coming soon. And of course the teeter-totter is not going to be small. We've got a few different holes in there so that we can adjust where the fulcrum lies. With a little paint and primer, this teeter-totter is going to be a lot of fun. Gary did an awesome job putting it together and making some really interesting shapes for the handles. It's science discovery. Yeah. That's why it's called the Discovery Museum. New hands. I need to see if you can get down. I don't think I can. It's... You gonna hurt yourself from getting down? Yeah, I see. Mahalo, aloha.